back to David's garage. In the last episode, I was finishing up the rust repair on the floors of my BMW 2002. Now, it's assembly time. After a coat of primer, and then some POR 15 rust paint, the sound deadening is ready to be installed, and so is the pedal box. I took the pedal box completely apart, sandblasted it, and gave it a coat of POR 15 as well. Finally reassembled it with some freshly plated bolts. Nice. Now the carpet can be installed. It was absolutely disgusting and after some good time with the pressure washer, it was usable once again. Next step was the heater blower. It did not do a thing. The one connector actually crumbled in my hands and the motor bearings were completely shot. Luckily I had a spare and made one good one out of the two. So after cleaning the brushes, it works again. Nice. After installing the heater box, I figured I should put my Recaro seats in too. These are out of a Mark II Volkswagen Jetta GTX and are super comfy. Perfect to sit in while installing the dash. And nope, I didn't forget the two little screws. After the dash was in, the windshield was next. This was all pretty uneventful. Everything went surprisingly smoothly except for when the engine was in. I'll get to that in a bit. But before I could install the engine, I replaced the rear main seal, oil pan gasket, and put a new clutch on too. After cleaning the filthy five speed, it was time to attach the engine and transmission together and prepare for install. Look at that stainless. This is an Ireland Engineering stainless steel exhaust. Paired to my stall headers, this should add a bit of power, I hope. So when everything was hooked up, it's time to start it. This is where it gets interesting. Here's what happened. So it kind of sounds like the starter is only half engaging. 
My initial reaction was something was wrong with the starter. So I took it out, cleaned the brushes, gave it some much needed lubrication, and after installing it did the exact same thing. So now I was really wondering what was going on and decided to take the transmission off and maybe somehow the flyway wasn't put on right or something, something along those lines, I don't know. But after taking the transmission off, everything looked fine. So put it all back together again and it did the exact same thing. Now, it was getting pretty late so I went to bed, <laughs> woke up the next morning and kind of thought to myself that it could be a power issue, just not getting enough power. So I checked the connections, everything was fine, and I checked the fuse box. Now one fuse was just slightly like skewed a little bit and it was only making half the connection somehow. If you remove the fuse, it actually didn't do anything. So I didn't actually get a picture of it and I can't replicate it now because every time you move it, it still makes a full connection. But it was a fuse. And yes, that's right. That means I took the transmission out because of a faulty fuse. Oh yeah, yeah, this is David's Garage. Massive idiot. Yeah, yeah, that's me, yeah. How can I help you? After figuring out that disaster, it started right up, and it runs great. I've been daily driving it for a bit now and it's been a lot of fun. Put quite a few miles on it and it hasn't really let me down since. The diff started leaking and the rear drive shaft U-joint started squeaking and was pretty much toast. Other than that, it's been great. 